Welcome to Dwarven Forge Live. This is On the Anvil, episode 41? 2? 42. 42! Yeah. Episode 42. This is the show where we take you behind the scenes at Dwarven Forge, show you what we're working on, talk about our process, mostly just hang out, have a drink, and uh, enjoy all things terrain and RPGs. and I don't know. What else What else do we do, Chris? <laughs> uh, theoretically give you insight into mm. the, uh, the the creative process the inner workings of our uh, our immaculate workshop or my basement in this case immaculate workshop <laughs> you know I, I dreamt that the the wormwood uh, workshop was like immaculate because there woods all this where and I went there and it's 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 really not it's a, it's well you know never fit. meet your heroes right I you know I I don't I don't I don't agree with that statement. I think you should meet your heroes. It depends on who they are, right? Well, as long as I've they're. Had some good, I've had I've had a couple good experiences. Yeah, as long as they're cool. Yeah, I've had I've had a couple of good experiences. I've had uh, a couple bad ones, but I guess honestly, cleanliness isn't the most important thing. No. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're uh, speaking of cleanliness. We're gonna. No, actually, I don't have a segue off that. <laughs> We're going to do some building tonight. We're going to take some questions. We're going to hang out. And uh, I think that's it, right? We're just going to build and talk. You had a good con sort of conversation topic for uh, for free build time. Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh, and we're going to be doing that. We're going to be talking about... Ooh, uh, is this a cliffhanger? So, you know, last time we got into, you know, like the, the, the building with like all the all the filters and like using a bunch of light panels and stuff. And it got me thinking, like, why don't we just talk about, like, the entire, like, our whole process of, like, how do we decide what kind of tech to pursue to add to our pieces? Because it's one of the things that kind of sets us apart from a lot of the other terrain companies is the uh, the little technology, whether it's LEDs or whether it's stuff like the Fogger. Um, so, yeah, just talking about, like, what that process is like for us, how we, uh, how we decide what to try and add, more or less. Well, and then there's it's actually a process, like because wanting it and actually being able to do it are two different beasts. The fogger was initially meant for hellscape. Yeah, it was a process. So anyway, before that though, let's go into the news, right? Yeah, let's hit the Boom. news. Hit the news and hope it doesn't hit back. All right. It is the news. It's the news. I should have done this clean. Oh, no. Oh, no. I went. <laughs> the news is back. Ah, I did. No. Double news. It's a, it's, that was a lot of news. All right. Are you okay? You were on fire for a second there. I think we're, it's still, we're still smoking over here. It's like. <laughs> so, uh, what's in the news? Well, first up, we got our Kickstarter of the week. The thing that we decided we're going to start doing last week. Uh, this week, we're highlighting uh, Tabletop World as a new Kickstarter. They're doing a bunch of stuff with graveyards. It's very cool stuff. They make very uh, they make very beautiful things. Uh, They're the world. two talented dudes in Croatia who make... Um, it's really just beautiful pieces. I've been... I've been looking at, at their work a ton as we were going into cities, um, and uh, it's really nice stuff. It's it's cast in reg resin, resin, so it's super fragile. Actually, let me get one of these. Yeah, they um, they launch they launched either today or yesterday. 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 Yeah. Yesterday. Uh, pretty new, but the stuff looks great. Their stuff always looks great, and uh, we wanted to shout them out. So this was like their one of their old ones, their blacksmith shop. So the, it's it's like you feel like you're gonna break it by breathing on it, um, but it's like it's unbelievably detailed. They're they're really talented folks, and it comes you know it, it comes packed in like crumpled up newspapers. So you like, it's just it's literally it's like just two dudes in Croatia make stuff, and it, it takes a long time for them to make it because it's hand cast. Um, whatever, but they're very talented artists who make some really it's. Uh, someone I, I posted in the comments. I wish them luck as they launched, and someone posted, "Wow, you know, I thought you guys were like competitors 
or something. And, and we're not, you know, we're not. We make, we both make terrain in the in uh, in the same scale, but uh, it's very different. Like theirs, theirs isn't modular and is super fragile uh, and has a wonderful style all its own and uh, fills a different niche than ours. And this Kickstarter particularly is a bunch of stuff that's not gonna that we're not gonna have in cities. So it's graveyard stuff. So we won't have. So it fills. If you're looking for, and they theoretically they're they're fulfilling in June, which I'm guessing means July, or something. But so you'll have it before we launch our Kickstarter. So that's pretty exciting. So I don't know. They're they're great folks. They they make awesome awesome models, and uh, I hope I wish them the best of luck. I hope they can. They already funded and they're they've broken a couple of stretch goals, and I hope they go to the moon because they could use it. They could soon be three guys in Croatia. They could be. Massive company expansion. They've hired a third guy. Dude, that'd be fifty percent growth. That we. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Heard that you can add to the Kickstarter anything from their store too, which is cool of them. Oh, that's cool. In the pledge uh, manager, you can uh, add and bundle up the shipping because it's 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 slow. It's like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it takes like three months to get your stuff sometimes. Because <laughs> they're literally they're like hand casting it. Yeah, I posted the link a couple times in the chat, but if you're looking for it, just type Tabletop World, and you'll find them pretty easily. Oh. Um, tabletop being one word, obviously. Uh, but yeah, stuff looks really good. I'm very excited about it. Uh, yeah, they're good. They're just great artists. They're cool. Uh, make some cool stuff. All right. Uh, moving on. Move. Um, we've mentioned Andrew a couple times on the show. Uh, he's actually starting a, uh, a he's our, he's our marketing stream. head of marketing. He's our head of marketing. Yes. Andrew roll from roll for persuasion has been persuaded to be a dwarf. And now what is he launching? Uh, he's launching an actual play. Uh, I believe it's going to be weekly, uh, show that starts on April 2nd. It is called second star to the right. Uh, doing a little, uh, little peter pan reference um, i think it's every two yeah. weeks i could be wrong though bi-weekly i don't know let me look it up real quick yeah no reason not to but know. It, friday the second it launches so next not this friday but next friday it launches right that is next friday isn't it what's today yeah that's yeah. two fridays away Good. yes second yes. friday to the right second friday to the right um I'm not seeing anything about it being every other week. So maybe it's every week? Yeah, it might be every week. Right. Either way, uh, they premiere then. I'm going to try to be there. Uh, if you want to uh, keep an eye on it, I'm going to post his... Uh, who I'm makes post a link there. Who makes the Neverland uh, setting? I wonder if it's homebrewed or if there's somebody who's done a uh, Never Neverland. I, I imagine it's got to be homebrewed, right? I, I, I don't know. If so, I'd be amazed if they could get away with using Neverland if it isn't an official product. No, it's got to be... Isn't it public domain at this point? Like, it was, didn't he write that, like, 400 years ago? <laughs> right? It was like... Yeah, but I feel like when Disney uses these public domain things, don't they then, like, claim them? I don't know. I'm... Turned, I'm not much of a lawyer. It's the... Me neither. I'm just yeah. afraid of going anywhere near the mouse. I've just heard nothing but bad things. Yeah. Like... Yeah, I don't uh, know. J.M. Barry wrote it. There's a Kickstarter. Okay. So I guess it is official. I have no idea. Either no. way, he's starting. He's starting the show, and uh, hopefully, he doesn't get sued and shut down by Disney after the first episode. But if we'll he does, see. man, what a story! Right? Yeah, they, and they can, can come back. All, they can make a whole show about that. Yeah, uh, they can come back with a set. Set it in Levernand, and it'll be like it's. The Bizarro Neverland. It'll be some. Supposedly, there's a Kickstarter for it that David Moffat is back, so I'm assuming cool. that they've got it in the clear. Uh, cool. So awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, outside of that, speaking of uh, actual play games, uh, I'm going to be playing in a game uh, at Gary Con tomorrow night. Woo! Uh, starting at uh, nine Eastern. Starting at nine Eastern. Uh, it'll be on the Gary Con Blinded Lands channel, although we will also be hosting it here. Uh, so you can either watch it on this channel or at their channel. 
And it's a super uh, diverse group of players. Like you're all playing different classes, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you've never seen anything like this before. Uh, we're play, I'm playing a, a College of Lore bard, uh, and then uh, Grant Ellis is playing a College of Swords bard, and then uh, Lindy is playing a College of Whispers bard, I believe, and uh, Thad is. Oh no, Thad might be the College of Whispers. Thad is College of Whispers. I believe Lindy is College of Creation. Woo! So it's a four bard party. It's going to be really weird. Uh, it should be fun. We're planning on doing a bunch of costuming and everything, which should be great because I'm playing a Loxodon. So I've got to make an elephant costume. Uh, in 24 hours? In, in 24 hours. So, so th that's like a that seems like an episode all in itself. <laughs> make it out of the air. And Arthur yeah. Wright uh, of Rollout is is NPC is uh, DMing, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Arthur of Gaming, I think, is what he goes by a lot of the time. Um, so it's it's in collaboration with Vorpal Board. We will be using Vorpal uh, Thad, who we mentioned several times on here and has played on our channel before. Uh, he's going to be in it, and uh, Art is somebody they work with all the time. Um, hey, speaking of Vorpal yeah. Board. Speaking of Vorpal Board, it is actually uh, now officially launched in our store. Uh, I'm sure you may have seen the uh, both of the videos that went up on our YouTube today. One of them being a Vorpal Board tutorial. The other one being how to uh, use our terrain to build maps specifically for remote play. Um, so both of those went up uh, today. Um, and the arm is in the store. The seems pretty positive, so I'm pretty happy about that. Well, what's cool is we have the we put the gift card in the bundle. So you get the arm, two months of Vorpal, and a fifteen dollar gift card. So if you were thinking about going Vorpal, it's a good uh, it's a good way to. If nothing else, you, what is it? Fifty bucks, and you get a fifteen dollar Golden Forge gift card. So uh, forty five dollars. Forty five dollars. So it's thirty bucks. Yeah, for... thirty five is the bundle, and that comes with the arm, the extra long arm. So you're used to, you know, like the the clip. Oh yeah, you've got it there. It's got like an extra half a foot on on each side or something. It's big. So it's basically like a foot longer than standard arms. It covers um, as much table as you'd want to cover in remote gaming. Yeah. Uh, unless you're uh, us. <laughs> so you get the arm, you get uh, two months free of the of a, of a sub you know, subscription, which is a word I always struggle to say. Uh, so that's $10 right there. And then you get a $15 Dwarven Forge gift card. Yeah. And then which, once once those two months are up, you it's 5 bucks a month, so it's not a big... Yeah. Uh, and you're the only one that needs to get it. Like your whole party, like as a DM, you you pay the five bucks. Everybody else just logs on for free. It's like, and it's super easy. It took, it's like five minutes to set up. Well, maybe fifteen if you're like doing a laboratory or anything. But it's really like, it's a no brainer. Once you get used to it, it's a it's a very quick thing to do. Um, it's just kind of learning a new skill, more or less. Yeah, but it's not even but, that uh... crazy. Like, it's not that like I don't know. There's nothing like you literally just pull, pull, hook up your download the app. Hook up your phone, connect to the same room by just putting in the code, and you're streaming. That's it. Like it's you just give people a link, they join in, and you're there. It's like, it's really easy. Yeah, we. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I know a lot of you have been struggling with using your Dwarven Forge terrain uh, during the the quarantine, or even after like your your parties like moved apart or uh, stuff like that. So hopefully this can help be a solution to that. Um, Outside of that, what other news? What, what news from the north? Oh, uh, we actually have one other game going on. Uh, I think we've touched on it every now and then uh, here, but outside of outside of the stuff we do uh, for Dwarven Forge, I've been doing a uh, a weekly actual play uh, show called The Natural Ones, Ones for like a year and a half, somewhere around there, and uh, we do it every Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, so it's right now he's really, playing. <laughs> it's, it's, it starts in 45 minutes. Um, but we're actually doing a, a special event with that, with that crew. We wanted to start doing more than just our weekly show. Um, so, uh, Chelsea, one of the players has been, uh, working all month to produce an all, uh, all women's one shot, uh, game. And, uh, with recent events as well, uh, the, the cast decided that they wanted to make it a fundraiser for um, for the I'm Ready movement, if you've heard of that going on, which is a movement to try and 
help with the issues faced by uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander uh, women specifically. Um, so it's so for a good it's, cause. It's a fun thing. Yeah. We we literally have we literally have women from all around the world. Uh, last night we did a vocal board training session with all of them. We had like nine people in the room because it was also other people from our team just to make sure all that stuff was going on. There's like and, people uh, in New Zealand, right? Or or like. Yeah, so we've got we've got one player from each time zone in the United States. So all four U.S. time zones uh, of the mainland United States, I guess you should say, not counting Alaska, Hawaii. Um, Wait, there's four time zones. Got, the, the DM is in Scotland, and another player is in Australia. So we've got six different time zones. Wait, how are there four time zones? We've got Eastern, Central, Mountain. Oh, because mountain switches from yeah. Yeah. Because they're on different ray, or, oh. yeah. Because only a three hour difference to California, but yeah. So that's going on. Uh, if that interests you at all, uh, that game's gonna be happening next Tuesday at eight p.m. Eastern. Uh, but what so... time mountain? What? What, what time? What time mountain? What time central? What time mountain? What time Pacific? What time New uh, Zealand? Central is the one hour difference. I think mountain yeah. is the two hour difference because that's like yeah. it's the it's the Rockies that it's yeah. the mountain time for. Yeah, and then Pacific is three. You know what it is. Everybody knows how to convert by this point. You hear Alcat? Yep, she's pacing in circles around my chair, meowing at me. Uh, let's Meow. see. So I'm gonna drop the link Ooh. to that channel if you're interested in checking out that show. Um. So yeah, what else? Uh, what else do we have in the news? We have, I think, two other things. So, uh, not only is the vocal board uh, arm now in our store, we've also got the store update starting very soon. We're actually going to uh, update it in two parts. Um, and the first, the first update to the store, we are planning to go live at the end of the month. Conceptually, uh, so we we broke up. We were trying to do the website update and the store update all in one fell swoop. And Johanna feels more comfortable with breaking up in two, and just in case something goes off the rails, we have a little more time to react, which means the store update should happen at the end of this month or first thing in April. And that's the one that's going to impact people a lot because it's new filters, new sorting for all the products in our web store. It's, it's going to hopefully make the shopping experience infinitely easier. You can actually find stuff. Like, yeah. It'll be all the dungeon stuff will be together instead of split into two things, and all the wilderness will be together, and train trays, and all you know. It's just I don't know. I think it's the filters are just amazing. We got some really neat bits. So hopefully that's coming in the next two weeks, and then two weeks after we update the uh, the uh, the rest of the website, and then we have another phase after that, which will be a couple months with the the rest and the rest of the website. It's only been like you know three years we're, we're so close we're so close ah. <laughs> yeah uh you like the store uh well you're gonna like it even more after this it'll be much easier to navigate yeah uh neofoy is saying we should go live on april 1st if people think it's a joke <laughs> what i just realized is uh is the well i guess no are, are we doing the build of the month on the first or are we doing it like the first it's the first tuesday, tuesday. okay man it'd be great if we set the two thousand dollar castle build of the month live on april 1st and then we're like Pools, like a two thousand dollar build of the month but it's actually real but it's real yeah my bro uh, my brother was born on april fools and nobody would come to his birthday party right? um speaking of which uh someone's wondering if we have if we know what the gift card amount is going to be for the build of the month yet no no i do right. not uh, hey, I've been on. We have any news about Wildlands? I've been Funny on Spring that. Break for these last two days, so I don't even know anything. I'm like, right, right. Your kids have been off of school. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, f funny, funny. You ask if we have any Wildlands news. We actually have uh, two bits of news. Uh, the first is that uh, things have just been kind of wild here, so uh, it, it's taken us some time. But the the Wildlands update is going to be going out. Uh, next week the, the march update traditionally uh, they're like we'll always we're kind of always going to do them right at the tail end of the month because we kind of wait till the uh i don't know do we have a bunch as much stuff to show as possible like we're it's not going to be like especially if we send you know we send the february update in the last month of february we're not going to send the march update the first week of march so it would as long between them they gives us more time to do stuff so it'll go out first thing next week 
um, so hopefully we'll have one more batch of stuff. Actually, it came yesterday, I think. I don't know. I've been out of the office. So I don't, don't know. Yeah. But, the, the, the exciting thing uh, about that is, yeah, now we have some really cool stuff to show because uh, we have some more Wildlands test shots. Not much. A couple. But that's all you need, right, is a couple. Let's go I, it's more than we currently have. <laughs> yeah. Some is better than none. All right. So we got... Oh, they already snuck, snuck in here. All right. I should have... I have a... It's kind of a cluttered frame to show stuff. Let's see if I can... Here it is. Here's the... Uh, here's... And they don't paint it. Here, so... here are the Wildlands test shots. Get a piece of black wrap. You recognize this bill from last week. We're going to be working on this after the news. Um, right. oh. oh, I guess I should focus. So that's the long straight. Straight escarpment. Um, so this is a big beefy boy. Um, and the big thing I noticed is we had we changed the um, our square holes to round holes because. Square doesn't doesn't um, it doesn't shrink right. Squares shrink uh, lopsided, so we had to make them circles. So they're slightly larger circles than squares. But on the table, I don't think it's too visible. Once it's painted, it won't be too killer. I don't think. That's our little port for attaching um, drift stones or climbing ropes or uh, what do we have that tree branch or whatnot. Man, they really did keep a lot of the detail in there. Oh, it's staggering. And it's a hefty, uh, nice big hefty, hefty boy. Then, we got this guy. Just our basilisk. How sharp are the uh, spikes? Um, They're not going to, they're hurt, actually. I take it back. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Yeah, they're sharper than I realized. Actually, I scraped my finger on the one of these. Uh, I don't remember which claw, some claw the other day. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty sharp. The detail is just it's dynamite. This guy is looking good. I cannot wait to see that painted up. You don't want to see something funny? Wait, let's find it. Well, I don't know. This is a uh, this is a basilisk by another company. An official. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> it's <laughs> well. Uh, so yeah, I think we're slightly larger than medium-sized creature. Well, you 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 can't say we just made something you can get somewhere else. You know. No. <laughs> you, you, uh... you can't. Uh, and then we have the the LED version of this guy, which isn't a ton. Isn't it's harder to see. Because it's, uh, it's all clear. Um, same glorious skull, but check this wizardry out. Uh, he's got three LEDs in his head. We got not one, not two, but three LEDs in there. So there's there's essentially one LED that's providing a frontal light for the eyes, and then there's two back-facing LEDs to um, light up these uh, these back glands, which kind of gives some nice light on the hood. Yeah, bonkers. I just realized that the fact that it's cast translucent means that you can do a lot of cool stuff with custom paint jobs. Oh yeah, yeah, you can go, uh, you can go bonkers. Uh, and we're trying to get these to be breathing LEDs so that it has the, the gentle, warm, warm, warm pulse. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's pretty cool, right? The nobody's making, uh, nobody's jamming LEDs in their. Uh, it's maybe because it makes them too damn expensive. <laughs> maybe, maybe because the rest of the basilisks are too small to have an LED in them. Yeah, it's as, as big as a basilisk. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I, in the olden days, basilisks were scary. And that little guy is not quite as scary as uh, I'd like it to be. Um, <laughs> can, can I get a how to paint this thing video so I don't paint it like a kindergartner? Well... That could be a fun stream to do, actually. So we could do. Uh... Actually, funny enough, uh, Hamster was talking about doing some how to paint videos for some of the minis. So maybe that's a good awesome. one to do. Yeah. I think especially with the I think especially with the translucent one, it'd be nice to. Uh... 
yeah. yeah. So that was going to be a little more complicated. Well, it feels like the pressure's on, right? Like you don't want to you don't want to paint over something that you want to have light shining through, and it's like, but you want to paint over everything else that you don't, so you get it's nice and opaque. So I feel like that that's pre- it's pressure. It's why hellscape's the hardest terrain to paint, right? Yeah. You can't just paint everything over. You got to like be super careful about not covering the wrong areas. Yeah. Or maybe you want an organic look. Yeah. Build as organic. Let's um, see. let's uh, that's all we have in the news world, right? Um, yeah, I believe so. There are people wondering if we knew anything more about delays or anything. Uh, um, no, I've been, I've been blissfully out of the office, so I don't know what uh, I don't know anything. But uh, I, we're not gonna know more until. I don't know. It's gonna. We're not gonna know until stuff is hitting the water. What our exact timeline is, um, but I don't know. We haven't. We've. We were doing great up until New Year's or you know, the Lunar New Year, and then there's been just a dearth of test shots. Um, so I don't know. I think hopefully we'll get. They'll get back up to speed, um, or you know, full speed soon and we'll be seeing a whole bunch more test shots and i think we're i think the expanded masters are 85 percent complete or something but we haven't i don't know we're not super far along on casting yet which is the one that gets us and then it's the painting right so theoretically like i don't know there's a whole it's a whole chain reaction stuff but we will uh we will see i don't think they've been I, the, the factory has not gotten like covid really uh it slowed them down a bunch. Like it was definitely like they just, they didn't get a bunch of, a bunch of the workers didn't come back. Like they, you know, they just didn't really? have people. Well, cause they, people had to get another job or whatever, or just, you know, like you're closed for months. It's like, what are people, you know, what are people going to do? It's from similar to the U S where just a lot of people lost their jobs or found something else or moved on or whatever. So they lost a bunch of folks and I don't know, they've been kind of poking along. Uh, trying to make the most of it, like kind of like everybody, but I, I, I don't think they've sort of let on what their level of losses were, um, but we'll we'll see. We will keep you posted as soon as we actually have anything. But I don't think we're gonna have any concrete timeline. What are we in? We'll, yeah, we we'll probably tail end of next week, uh, next week, next tail end of next month. I bet they'll have said they'll probably finally admit that they're going to be late and we'll find out what their estimate is. But I don't know. We will, we will let you know as soon as we know. Well, but we'll, we'll send out the ex- update next week with whatever test things. We got some, we got the new, um, the 24 inch mats are in. Um, and uh, I don't know what else. Maybe we're getting another batch of test shots before. Probably not before Monday. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, but uh, let us look to the the present and the future and the past. I guess we're gonna talk about things we made, right? We're we gonna build. Yeah. Have fun. Do we? Uh, one last thing. Do we know what the casting color for the mountains is gonna be yet? Or no, but I I'm no, I don't know yet. That's a good question. They they were they wanted to do it later. Um, to save base coating, but I don't know. I don't know what their final. We will. I feel like it kind of evolves as they do this crazy Tetris of like which molds and which casting and what. When are they doing the casting runs? Because if they start some of the mountain stuff where they're not doing all of it, because if some of the molds are done, if like a whole mixed bag of molds is done and the mountains are in there, then they might do those all in the same color. And in which case, then they might do the rest of the mountains in that same color but if a bunch of the mountains are done, enough of mountains are done that they can do a huge casting run in a slightly lighter gray then they'll do that and i like i don't know i think it's good they're gonna, gonna be kind of dancing around it until they actually are producing it if that makes sense okay let's see um i guess that's the thing with like a lot of the stuff is it's we don't really make the decision on casting colors and stuff like that it's it's driven by the necessity of manufacturing, right? Like whatever the reality and necessity is. Um, so it'll be, I don't know, a lot of it gets sort of 
Tetris right up to the last minute where they're like, they're trying to figure out, well, if we move this thing over here and this thing, you know, there's it's an elaborate, uh, I am, I'm glad I don't have to figure it out. So I, uh, I just boosted my audio to see if this fixes it. People are saying I was a little quiet, uh, but I thought it was fine before. So I'm just going to see if that fixed it. So what do we got on the table here? Uh, so last week we were, uh, we took a vote. What do we want to build? This said, uh, wilderness and somehow, I don't know how light panels came up. Someone said we should build with light panels. So we're trying to use three light panels in a wilderness build. We did this kind of this side of the, uh, the river. Oh, I'll, I'll go to my, uh, let's go POV cam, right? which is all right. Whoop, on the vorpal arm here so we have we got we got this side of the uh the river put together last week including this cool gag in the spirit tree with the uh the light uh, light panel under there i had to bring back the overlays because we needed to ship them out as samples um so these are like the the overlays that didn't quite make it um the b the uh, in process overlay. So now we're over on this side of the thing. We've got two spots to do light panels. We're trying to do three portal things, whatever. So I think what we're going to do, oh, and what I did over here, this is really fun, is I, I just double layered the overlays because they, it got, this one was getting a little blown out when you just put one on. So I figured if I put one on, they're slightly different. This one has like harder lines and this one has more organic lines. It makes like a, a cooler color. Wow, that, the camera is like, what's going on? Where am I? <laughs> um, so we got this thing. We got, we're going to do some fun thing with the tower. Um, maybe I should switch. What should the emanations be out of the tower? And this is the really washed out one. So maybe I'll have to turn this down. Maybe I'll put the emanations in the tower. And then this will. I'll make this the Fey pool up here. I'll do a, like a pool of water thing over here. Let's do that. That'll be fun. Um, seems like, it seems like that's what people want, yeah. Got to give the people what they want, Chris. You got it. If I've learned anything, so we're uh, so we're, so we're doing we're we're doing river tiles then. Well, at some point, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do river tiles in this city, and uh, a team talked me out of it. We had like a we had a logical, we have we have a lot of these very logical discussions, where we uh, we discuss what makes sense to make, and uh, it's uh, it doesn't make sense. Like, Given enough time, we will make everything. These are facts. No, it was just like considering what we were trying to do. Rivers were too far off the. Uh, at one point, we at one point we were kicking around. Hey, we'll do the hinterlands. Like it'll be, you know, the the meeting of wildlands and civilization. We'll do the you know the cool. It'll be frontier and there'll be palisades and rivers and things, whatever. And yeah, it was a double whammy. That stuff didn't test so well in our. Uh, in our our uh, survey, um, so, and which is weird, right? Because like, dude, that's where I want to be. Always yeah. here. It feels like whenever like we get like verbal input, it seems like people are always into yeah. Please do frontier. Please do palisades. Please do like that stuff. But then yeah. when we put out like the survey, it was like the bottom or second to last one. Yeah, no, it was like just scraping the bottom of the barrel. You know, it's well because there's this thing there. We have a lot of different communities of people that are part of this and the the super active vocal folks tend to have a different opinion maybe than the really quiet people that don't ever say anything but would love to fill out a survey um or maybe everybody's lying you know? oh there you go. all right so i'm gonna go i'm gonna work on a tower back here but um let's do we have any first of all we have any questions before we go into uh talking points uh, I just got a lot of people shouting at us to please do the hinterlands. Yeah. Um, is this a castle piece? Yeah. So this this uh these round walls that are on the portal right here are the batter bases from castles. So you can um, give that cool flared look at the bottom of your castle, which is everybody. I mean, I guess I assume everybody knows the purpose of everything. But then when I was talking about um, the the Barbican and turns out a lot of people didn't know what a barbican was do people know what a batter the batter is for on the bottom of a castle 
to, uh, to make a cake. Oh boy, the door is. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm assuming it's something to do with like helping keep the tower stable. Yeah, you've got like the outwards pressure so it doesn't tip over. Uh, that's a tertiary reason. The it's and it was tertiary on the walls too. Is the it's a it's a double it's a, it's three things. One, it's for stability. Two, it's um it just makes it stronger, right? The bottom is where people are ramming or doing whatever. It just it, you're thickening the bottom of your castle so stronger. But this is the cool one, is the angle. So can, where are we on this thing? So the angle, you know, it, is going like this. So if you drop a projectile like a rock from the top of your tower or your wall, and it hits the batter, it ricochets out at oncoming. Uh, attackers, right? So if you're pouring oil or dropping stones or whatever, it, it deflects stuff out at attackers. Oh, also the incoming force of like a battering ram or whatever, instead of being flat, it's defect, deflecting some of the force up. So it's, it's physics, simple physics, medieval physics. Um, but yeah, that's the, uh, so I, I wanted to, uh, wanted to be, I wanted to do it for walls also, but it, it, we didn't get there. Um, that's like a really cool thing to actually work into the game even physics if you physics no just like the idea yeah like actually taking like batter bases and stuff into account like i yeah like like having like an actual castle siege where you have to take the actual geometry and everything of the castle into into account to like this will be more effective if you hit it here yeah that's 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 interesting hmm now what do i do i'm gonna do a ruined we want to how do we do how do, we do, this? do i have floor do i skip the floor altogether? <laughs> it's yeah, that's ugly. Do I do like a? Do I do? Oh, have you been following uh, AOD, which I think is Agents of Destruction? Uh, Architects moving into in-house mold production and casting. Apparently yes. they shipped the Kickstarter. Yes, yes, they. Uh, it's pretty impressive. They uh, they did a really good job with their painting, and um, I mean they're what? I know I I, I backed that uh, I backed that Kickstarter just to keep an eye on what they're up to um and they were they you know i was i was kind of i was kind of angry at them when they launched because they put in their video they're like you know we're manufactured domestically for on time shipping and delivery and i was like wow that is definitely like a straight up shot at us and uh now at this point they are like 18 19 months late and they've only shipped the first half like they're the basic bits so um that, uh, I, there's a little uh a little, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just never know what kind of no, complications are gonna pop up you know you never know not sometimes all the times it's kickstarter you never know like you're you're doing a, you're doing a thing in a dream and you don't know you do not know uh and you they, try to pers- you, they you didn't try to foresee as many problems as you can but there's always going to be something that you just can't figure out before it happens they didn't know what they didn't know it was the cockiness of uh you know trying to be the upstart but no they they um the it's pretty cool they're they're tooling they're tooling all their uh tooling all their own molds and um it's a pretty cool uh it's a pretty cool thing they get going uh, they would never be able to do stuff like our wildlands molds it's it's way uh i would bet them I would bet them a million dollars. They couldn't. Uh, they're you know they're right now they're doing small, simple, flat dungeon pieces, and it took them eighteen months to get that one together. Like, there's no way. But it's it's pretty cool. Like they're you know potentially be, being able to manufacture domestically um, at scale um, and at their prices. Like I don't know how they have their prices as low as they do. Uh, probably they're not making any money. Um, but it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, interested. What do you think the odds are so this is the first one, right? Yeah, like yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful to see what they like. I hope that they can. I hope they make enough out of this that they can they can do another one, right? I'd love to what do, see. What do you think the odds are that they underestimated the overhead? Uh, I, I bet them that same amount of money that I was betting <laughs> that they couldn't do our they couldn't do our wildlands pieces that they uh they absolutely underestimated. Well, they're 18 months over schedule and they still haven't finished delivering right so they're going to be two years behind schedule so there's no way they they budgeted two years of salaries uh on top of whatever else they're doing 
And I don't... Like here. Yeah. I guess it's one thing you don't really think about, too, is, like, when, when it gets delayed, like, that gets more expensive for the people making it, too, because that just means that's more time. That's oh, like, yeah. No, that's so... more months of having to pay rent. That's more months of having to pay wages. Dude, so many people lose their shirt on Kickstarter because they're just, like... You know, because of that, right? They just can't. They can't ride out the thing they owe. They owe this thing, and they're just they can't make it. It's like it's, it. It can be brutal. Um, but you know, that's the. It's. I mean, it's just like any other entrepreneurial venture, right? There's yeah. there's there's a thousand curveballs and unexpected things, and it's all part of the uh, part of the fun. The stuff looks great, though. I'm glad they managed to get it out. Dude, their painting is fantastic. Yeah. 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 I hate the the ABS stuff. Feel doesn't feel great, but they, the clip their open lock system works fantastic. And um, no, I'm, I'm excited to see what they. I'm excited to see where they go next. You know, they like what they when they kind of they get on the other side of this and they're like, okay, now, now, how do we like you know where do we go from here? I'm 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 interested to see what that is. Boy, this is yeah. a huh. I didn't realize that you could just fit those walls just inside the batter bases like that. Well, it's designed to go around your timber. I'm building in reverse, right? So you build I've never, it. I've, yeah, I've never actually built a castle, so I didn't know that. that... Yeah. Huh. And then you remove these, the fill pieces. Like you can remove. I remove this one so we can have the door there. Uh, so you can get in and out. You can use them also on higher levels of it to connect stuff. There, like, there's I, I, the I went bonkers with the geometry on castles. There's some really there's some cool stuff. If I if I do say so myself, <laughs> I just did say so. Yeah, but no cow carcass. So we got to leave something for the next, uh, you know, for the next one. Return return to castles just to put in the animal carcasses. Could it? Turns out I didn't realize how popular that cow would have been. I had underestimated it. Ooh, what are you going to do over here? Let's see. We agree, good geometry on castles. Is that rabbit? Yeah, that's rabbit. Dude, did you, did you <laughs> see his, uh... It's the royal we you gave him away. Did you see his castle, uh, his castle tweet? Yeah, he put it on the forums Four in Discord, too. Yeah. He's, uh, he's blasting those castles everywhere. I mean, it's kind of cheating because he lives next to a castle, so I I don't think it's fair. But yeah, it's uh, guy guy knows his way around a castle. I'll tell you. I'm sitting on three Kickstarters I'll never see. All of them I'm salty about because except for one, I wasn't really into backing, but they were Kickstarter Gold or Make One Hundred. The other one just straight up was a swindler. Uh, wait, that's rough. Wait, what's Kickstarter Gold? Uh, I think it's like some kind of like extra verification thing like oh this is like a featured creator situation wow. like not a product we love it didn't uh, wow. I, I've seen it around but I don't really know what it means I want to be gold Come on. hey don't fight me hey stop what are you doing wait what was the what were the ones that burned uh... I'm not sure if you're happy yeah basically what Chris said okay cool because I, I was I was pulling that out of thin air honestly um let's see there's I, I there's definitely I've been burned a few times in Kickstarter like it definitely there was the the labyrinths what was it the there was one Kickstarter some Canadian folks who were doing a terrain Kickstarter that just went belly up they delivered Zach Hagen I think got one and then they went like belly up the la labyrinths or something and I don't know there's there's definitely been some Turns out some shady operations on the internet. Who would have ever someone, guessed? Someone was saying they just got their uh, Siege of Citadels stuff, and it was about five years late. Wow. Which, I mean, again, like, you never know what's... There, there are some games I've backed that re have, have released, like, two or three years past their initial expected date, just because they did not expect... Yeah. Uh, you know, so sometimes it's their first time, like, you know, making and shipping a game themselves. So they just didn't quite know what they were getting into. Shipping is the worst. People yeah. don't know. <laughs> is still waiting on my Axe and Shield risers. Oh, I got my I got my Axe and Shield stuff like a month ago. Maybe I got the uh, here's a little thank you bundle right here. 
I backed a metal dice from Gil, and I doubt I'm getting anything. Oh, the vlogsmith? Really? Maybe? That's I'm not bummer. sure. I'm not familiar I mean, it's the one. only Gil making dice, right? He's... Got burned on a portable gaming table. Guy just walked away with everybody's money. Wow. That's rough. Yeah, there's some... Everybody tries to show his face somewhere again. Everybody remembers and just kind of... <laughs> there are some charlatans on... Uh... Really okay. are. There, there are people out there who will just like abuse goodwill and it's you yeah. it's it's really rough to see you know you, you play into that uh you play into that um you know like scrappy creative aesthetic and there are definitely people who take advantage of it dude i could definitely play that that angle <laughs> scrappy creative yeah. i'm i'm in it i'm in it go on yeah, tell me too, more we're, 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 we're too we're too big now we have like 50 employees you know 50 <laughs> I saw that, I saw that somewhere. Somebody was like Where? estimating what our overhead was, and they were like, "I must say they have around fifty employees." And I was like, "No, that's awesome, no. dude. That's awesome. If what what do we have? Eighteen people can do the the work that feels like fifty. That's like yeah. good on us. Yeah. Um, How about this? You know what? See. This build is going to make Rabbit upset that we don't have crenellated ruined crenellations. I think. You don't have them there, or no? They just don't exist. We, you know, well, we made a few. Um, Try and do a thing like this. Like, uh, I don't know where those stairs are going to, but that was neat. Um, no, we made a we made a couple of prototypes, and then we didn't. We cut them. They never got. We just they didn't get made. The long list of things that didn't get made. Actually, not that long a list. Just long enough. That's that one hurts though extra. Yeah, Rabbit says the castle gods are not pleased. The castle gods. So he communes directly to the castle gods. He's a cleric of the castle god domain. Yeah. The castle what would the domain. Castle god be? Would it just be like the name of a really famous castle? Carcassonne. <laughs> um. Oh, so somebody NPC Creations is saying uh, hey. they think Gil just got in over his head and is in like the lost his shirt category and he feels bad for him. Yeah. No, it's it like you can you can get crushed by success on Kickstarter. I've seen it happen. That was the thing. When we were talking, uh, uh, and I, I, I know he's going to end up the, the delivering on it. Uh, when we were talking to uh, Redbeard Boss yeah, uh, about the Ghost Hunting stuff, and he's talking about how, like, he's like, yeah, when the when the last one, like, got really big, he's like, I had to do all the packing and shipping. He's like, I think I might, I, th I think I might pay somebody to just help me pack up all this stuff for shipping. I'm like, you did all of that by yourself before he delivered early oh. on his last one too i'm gonna say it was uh or at least i got my it went in waves but i got i got mine early uh i believe too which is whoops my thing saying yeah it's uh it's, it's always wild when you see people who genuinely like especially when it comes especially when it comes to the shipping part the shipping is definitely one of the hardest parts dude it's the worst capital um, Axe and Shield is late, yeah. Like, way late, yeah. Well, it's the same thing. It's like him and his wife in the basement trying to fulfill a thing. Like, it's tough. Let's see. Oh, Alaska Slacka. Also, welcome back. I do remember you from the from the earlier streams. Uh, they've been gone for uh, for a while, long enough, that they're they're asking uh, if we've announced what the next biome is going to be for the next Kickstarter. Uh Cities. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're going back to the cities. We've actually done a couple streams showing off a lot of the early prototype stuff. That's all subject to change. Um, so this, <laughs> the systems again. that we're looking at and everything, if you uh, look back uh, at the at the VODs, at the, at the at the videos of these of these streams, basically, you look for, I think, City Planning Committee was one of them. There were two that basically have city or town in the name uh, from the last, like, two months, and they should have information on what we're doing and next week's actually is going to be an update on uh ks8 stuff as well so we'll be talking about the systems there mr anderson is that the oh i thought that was the ice cream truck i wish it's a, no. it's a pretty nice uh it's a classy ice cream truck man i i miss i miss being able to like get excited about the ice cream truck without it being weird it's not weird, dude. Ice cream is delicious. Like, what's not to love about ice cream? Although the ice cream from New York City ice cream trucks not that 
great in the grand scheme of ice creams. Um, what should we do with this tower? Does this make even? Does this even make sense that it has like a? Hey, let me dim this down. Does it, is it about making sense or is it about being cool? I don't know. It's like there should be some so sort. So if of... this is a tower that's like sinking into the portal over time or something, like maybe I think it works. I need to put. Hmm. Is it weird? Or maybe the. Or maybe this tower used to be somewhere else and it was teleported here. Hmm. Through the portal. Like crawl. Yeah. Oh man, I Is there a place? There's this There's a thing okay, so you don't know what Outer Wilds is, right? No. It's a it's a extremely good video game. I don't wanna Oh, I love video it's a thing games. That's, it's a thing that's very easy to spoil for people, but there's a there's a there's a specific puzzle in in Outer Wilds that is very very cool that uses a concept similar to that that I that I like a lot. Just like the idea of like a massive building being like moved somewhere else all of a sudden. Cowl's moving moving castle. Cowl's moving castle. Yeah, you know, except but sure, not, exactly. Yeah. It's exactly like Cowl's moving castle. But not by choice. Uh, but no. Yeah. Tower uh, staircase reminds me of the fight between the Kurgan and Ramirez. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Does the tower have a basement full of ice cream? Go on. I, that makes sense. <laughs> is that, is, are all these portals just different flavors? Yeah, vanilla, chocolate, and uh, Shadowfell. Green. The classic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the the classic uh, flavors. Everybody loves an ice cream. Hmm. Um. Right. So. Why don't we talk about these these light panels? Like these were these were a thing we introduced with Hellscape. Um, what? I, I'm actually not familiar with the process behind these. I've heard some things. I've heard that initially we wanted them to be programmable the way that like the light puck is. Well, Something that like was that. well, that was Mark two. That was so. Huh, where do we even start? So. It was a, it's a dark and stormy night. We, um, I mean, I guess it's the biggest, biggest, biggest picture going like way, way back up to the highest level. Um, I'm always looking for what are the fun things we can do at the table, right? Like what's the, what's the thing that's going to wow your players? What's the thing that's going to like make that story you know they'll just they'll they'll remember that session forever or whatever like what's that what's the really exciting thing you can do um and the the in when we were going into hellscape we were originally going to have leds in every single piece so uh wait, oh can you Right, so like, so like, this was gonna have an LED here, and then probably two in here. This was gonna have like sort of everywhere there was a lava spout, we were gonna have like an LED, and then at least one or two others. So like, pieces were gonna have generally like three LEDs or something. The price was outrageous. It was it was nuts. And then as we were sort of experimenting with slugging a bunch of LEDs in, then the that led to sort of realizing oh if we cast these in translucent then we can kind of get a more even lighting and it was too spotty and whatever and i was like oh perfect so we can underlight them and have the leds inside so so we get an overall you get a wonderful overall light and you have these like these flickering hot spots that are also have some life in them that um yeah, it was still like didn't it just raised the price even more because then not only are you getting <laughs> you're getting a piece that would easy, but you're also were like, well, you got to get a light panel to go underneath it and do a whole thing and whatever. So, so that turned into maybe we'll just put a couple of LEDs in the, like the big like the the pedestal of pain and the waterfall and the volcano get a, get some LEDs and then everything else doesn't have LEDs because it was it was really uh, send the price to the roof. But so then it was like, well, 
what do we, you know, what do people, how do people light these? Like, what are we going to do? And there's a whole bunch of like flat for tracing stuff. There's a variety of flat LED panels on the market. Um, so we bought a whole bunch and we're trying to figure out. And the problem was they all have like a thick, they had a thick um, border around them, uh, black, thick black border. And they were annoyingly like a quarter inch high, not the height of our floors and whatever. So I was just like, well, we need to, we need to make our own LED panel. Like, let's just make an LED panel that is sized for our stuff because like that should just be easy and then everybody can get down. And it it opens up this whole, like, so so the, the manufacturing process is often really frustrating because just because you dream of doing a thing doesn't mean you can actually do a thing. Um, and I was like, yeah, I just want to make like an LED panel. Let's do it. And then you have to start pricing out matrix, like what's a, what's a matrix of LEDs cost? And what is that? Like it was all, it was like a whole thing. And then what size is like, there's, there's basic sizes that these things come in and can you do a thing and like so there was it was a whole you know, we were going to do four by fours and then we we're going to do six by six we we're going to do eight by eights we think maybe do 12 by 12s what's going to make sense what can you get a matrix for what can what's it so it's like months and months of back and forth with the factory on like what are the actual components that exist because if you're making custom components it's debilitatingly expensive so you have to use components that already exist find what those things are figure out it has casing and then I was like, all right, once we have it, it's like, well, we want it to be modular. I want to be able to break it apart. And I want to be able to <laughs> string them up together and I want to do this thing. And it was like, it's kind of a miracle that we managed to get the light panels ready in time for Hellscape because it was like, I don't know, it's just a lot of moving parts. And it's really, it fundamentally is very simple. Like you're just chaining things together. with But it was like being able to actually manufacture it at a price point that was sensible was the hard part. Like if we wanted to make a really, really expensive <laughs> one of the things yeah we could have but it was like we wanted to make them at a price that people could actually afford to get a bunch of and make and they're not perfect they still have they still have a little bit of a um they still have a little there's like a quarter inch uh, on these sides where it doesn't light up i was trying to get it as much like basically light up all the way to the edges as much as possible um and this is as much as we could get within the manufacturing the realities of manufacturing can i dim that down um but I think for you know for what it is is because it's the height of our floors because it's eight by eight so you can build nice and cleanly on it um, and we can chain them together uh, and the price isn't killer if you get it's, it's better if you buy the larger packs like the the main the driver unit what did we say branch main and branch was it yeah so the main unit is more expensive because it's got the adapter and the transformer or whatever and whatnot but then the rest of them it's it's not in the you know the grand scheme of things but you can also just go buy units on on uh ebay or on uh amazon or whatnot but it's it's quite a quite a thing doing like i don't know just trying to will it into existence but meanwhile like that was the easy thing meanwhile we're trying to make that the fogger so the uh the folks at real game effects who make the fog monster uh which is awesome um they use all the time uh they were so i was i I was talking to them. I was like, "Hey, we want to do. We had a bunch of cool stuff that they they weren't trying to do, and we were trying to do, and it, it like didn't work out. We were trying to we we're trying to partner up with them to make some some cool stuff, and uh, mostly it was the manufacturing issues, costs, um, timelines, all this good stuff. But uh, they because it didn't work out. It's kind of better that it didn't work out then they they were trying to we were trying to make a thing we were going to make a thing for their kickstarter and then they were going to do some technology for us and do a thing they were do this wireless this wireless electricity thing that they have was like was also maybe would have been expensive but pretty cool uh thing i still dream of for one day Wire, wireless electricity yeah it's not like, expensive yeah well i mean it's not yeah it's Simpler than that, but yes, like not quite like what Tesla was doing, but uh, uh, so they have a they have a the technology exists and they have the capability to do sort of a wirelessly power a bunch of LEDs. The problem is large sheets of metal are its kryptonite, and uh, it turns out we use uh, large sheets of metal 
all over the place. <laughs> like everything. They're like, ah, oh, it's, it's flawless. Except, you know, as long as you don't have any large sheets of metal anywhere near something, like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean by large sheets of metal? Because that, wait, wait. <laughs> have you seen her? Oh, you're killing me. But uh, anyway, so we, uh, we ended up making a, a fogger ourselves. But the, um, that, man, the path on that one. I mean, that was, geez, when was Hellscape? I don't even remember. Was that before? Hellscape was summer of 2019 is when the Kickstarter ran. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it took yeah. us a long time to get that thing because that's, you know, it's not it's not wildly crazy or confusing technology, but it's more confusing than a few LEDs, and it's been, like, getting that one through the factory has been, I mean, we're still retooling the thing and trying to, we have this new uh, new funnel system we baking in whatever like it's it's still going and it's it's been like almost three years i think at this point um but man it's a uh, it's gonna be worth it when that thing is up and running but i think the you know the bigger the bigger thing to talk about is sort of what we're you know our what we're trying to do is we're trying to design the the cool what are the things that are going to help you tell a cool story at the table right and then keep going back to that right so that was like the light puck was that as we were starting to play with with uh, the light panel, I was like, well, what if we put our RGB LED, LEDs in there? And what if we did this? And, the, and in fact, we was like, you guys are like, you guys are bonkers. We can barely even do this with the white ones. So I was like, well, and that's when we ran, we, we were poking around, with, though we met the um, the folks from Beconics. And um, I was like, oh man, I want to do like these programmable things. So they're like, well, oh, ah, well, wait, no, we can, ah, yes, I'm programmable. And it, Got fired up, and that was that once that started in Hellscape, also. And we just finished, we're just we're still cleaning that thing up. Man, that is like a whole nother crazy adventure. Um, but that was that was driven by the the desire to be able to control lights, right? I, I, I don't know if anybody else, but I was telling these stories where there's like magical stuff that's right, like you know, you're creating the the glow is doing this, the portal's doing that, the the artifice is charging up this. There's a weird, the room is illuminated by that. The fountain of things, like all this stuff where you're just like, magic is generally represented by light. And so it, there's all the time you're changing the light. And it's, uh, I really wanted to be able to control the light. And uh, by Jove, I think we, uh, I think we're there. We're, we're, we're dangerously, painfully close. How am I going to do this? Oh, wait, I'm off. Oh, no, I'm not. Um, and that's like, I don't even know what to think about talking about that development. That's been like, that's been really hard. Once again, because we're not, we're not equipped to, uh, we're not a science lab. I don't know if you knew this, Chris, but we're not, uh, we are not a bunch of real scientists. But well, we could be. No, no, we're not. We could hire some. Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, man, I wish I had some of the other uh, banks. Uh, that's what we, we really have to say. Doctor Sacco is our uh, our science guy. Doctor Sacco. Wait, we actually have a science guy. Yeah, Doctor Sacco. Who's Doctor Sacco? He's a scientist. We send stuff to to test rigorously. Is this real? I kid you not. We send what? we send stuff to a guy named Doctor Sacco, and Wait. he. <laughs> Yes, no, we he's... have a we have a guy named Doctor Sacco, and we send him like he literally is. He was you know he was testing all these things on the fog. That's how we determined that distilled water works enormously better, and um, he was testing the light puck, and we're just like yeah, all this. Uh, he runs it through like scientific tests, and like you know, and he does it. We with the uh, he we sent him the ice, and we couldn't figure out why the ice was changing color and stuff like he's. Yeah, we have a we have a an evil. Doesn't he sound like there's like you know the villain in some uh, you know the the Bond villain? Mm, Doctor yeah. Shacko, I presume. They had her like a Simpsons character. Yeah, based on a Bond villain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, like it's this. This just seems like an extended bit. No, L- okay. okay. Doctor Shacko. Yeah, why would uh, I? Why would I make that up of all? Uh, I, I don't know, man. Why would you think of uh, finding shrimp tails in your cinnamon toast crunch? What? People do weird things, man. That's right. You've been you've been offline for the last two days, dude. You don't know anything about cinnamon toast shrimp. What? Oh man. What's I? 
All right, dude. I, I don't like you. I, I'm out. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. All right. I, I'm out. All right. D <laughs> Disavow. Dodge. No. Uh... Did you ever watch Boy Meets World? No. All right. That's fine. I don't need to tell you then. Cool. I didn't want to know. Uh. <laughs> so, what were we talking about? Does anybody have any questions? We're just going. Yeah, some about first. tech stuff. Uh, it is also roughly time. Oh, for time the, to give away. Giveaway and, uh, Let's give it away. Give it away now. Give it away. Give it away now. Uh, and I mean, the giveaway word has got to be Sacco, right? Yeah, I don't know how to spell it. S A. Either with two Ks or a C K, right? S A S A K K O sounds cooler, right? That's like, if you were gonna yeah, write it in a screenplay, it'd be like it. Doctor Sacco. Doctor Sacco. Yeah. All right, so we're we're gonna go with that. Um, if you want, Whoa. you went uh, you went crazy. You sound you're like, you went wah 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 wah. There you go. It's Doctor Sacco. He's coming for us. He's uh, his his nanobots are in the uh, in the matrix already. <laughs> you heard that we were. All right. So uh, I don't know why you're mad at me. You're the one that got out of my lap. Um, yeah. So uh, if you want a chance to win a fifty dollar gift card, or or if you're in the U.S., you can also choose to get a starter dungeon instead. Uh, go ahead and type Sacco. That's S A K K O <laughs> in the chat, and you'll be uh, you'll you'll be entered in a, the chance to win. Um, he could be like the plucky sidekick on a right, like Orko from uh, Doctor Sacco. Orko? It was in He Man, dude. You gotta. Oh man, I haven't seen He Man in so long. I think the problem is when I saw He Man, I was too young to like remember uh yeah you were six months old or something <laughs> like no it must have been reruns right by the time was orco his he no, was like a was floating snarf, right? he was like a floating the... snarf and orco were basically the same thing the 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 funny okay. comic relief orco was like a floating wizard he looked like a final fantasy wizard he was like a floating final fantasy like wizard Mage, yeah, they yeah. Like pointy hat and stuff. yeah okay so you know final fantasy right because Man, you probably played just like. Did you only play like the original like original Nintendo Final Fantasies? Yeah, I played Final Fantasy Tactics, which was dude. Yeah, the greatest thing ever. It's so good. Yeah. Oh. I, yeah but that was. Is... I mean, what was that? That had to be like fifteen years ago or something, right? What was? It's it's an oldie. That was uh that was on uh the, how was that? Was that original PlayStation? No, it's PS two, I think. No, there's no way it was PS2. Hang yeah. on. Yeah. Definitely PS2. No, PlayStation 1. Oh, wow. Yep, first game in the series is PlayStation 1. Oh, there you go. Dude, it's so good. Uh, anybody have any questions? Oh, right, did right. Questions, talk about, questions. Did they even talk about questions technology? Right? I don't even uh, know now we're, we're just talking about Final Fantasy in chat. Oh. Uh, so... Well, what what about vibrating Dwarven Forge pieces or something like that perfection board game when the pieces pop out? Do you want to do you want to sell? A... I don't know about that. Must uh, develop the vibrator. The uh, um, well, we had the little trapdoor piece in the uh, the this the um Forsaken Temple, which was pretty awesome. Any of that stuff is really fun, right? Those little those little bits of childlike wonder. Um, I am a sucker for. Oh, do I have? Do I have wedges. Hey. Um. Oh. Yeah, we spring loaded more from Forge. What did I? I wanted to make something that was gonna launch at people. I can't remember what it was. Oh. Oh wait. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, somebody's asked if we've talked about infinity mirror pieces yet. Um, not on the air, but yeah, we've we've talked about it. Um, let's see. Particularly because Wizkids just did one in the in their yawning portal, so I'm like, well, we could do a better one than that. 
<laughs> Call them out. Let's go. <laughs> now, there, there, there's a lot of cool things you can do with infinity mirrors, and they're not really that hard to make. Like... It'd be pretty easy, you know, because we have like those, we have like those inserts that we use for, we have like the insert floor and stuff like that. We could just make something in that size and then that should fit into a couple different mm -hmm. places. You go to infinity and beyond? Yeah. How about ponds and rivers that we fill with water? Dude, there's somebody made, was it Dungeon Master Workshop? Uh, somebody made a working fountain uh with like that actually bubble like you know actually recycles water that is it's just outrageous um and uh yeah we talked about it at one point um i don't know if it's i mean here's the thing at the end of the day what do people want right like tell me what you want what do you really what, really want what kind of what kind of tech they want yeah, like, what do they, you know, what is, like, I feel like creating, spending a bunch of time and money to create a a fountain, uh, which people can't see that, uh, with actual water, is it, would you rather just have, like, a thatched roof that works or something, you know, like, I don't know, there's, like, I feel like we, I want to, I want to make, ideally we make stuff that has a gameplay component uh, not just, not just like a special effect for the sake of special effects, right? And so you could say that the the um, the light panel is on the line, right? It makes the lava look good, but I also I use it like sometimes I use it. You pulse it, right? Because it's got a switch, so you can do like the uh, like the uh, switch camera, right? They get to the 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 pool and it starts to glow, and you can actually dial it up a hand or they're doing a thing and it like reacts you know you can say so like you can actually you know you can actually do something with it and or it's off and then it illuminates or vice versa the thing illuminates and it turns off whatever so at least it, if nothing else you can i mean i guess you could do that with a fountain right the water stops running or the water starts running but it um it seems like it's more of a uh stretch like this. and I'll, plus the light panel you can use for a whole bunch of different applications oh huh, this is interesting um, uh, Jade Kind says they want fire inserts like the city runes that plug into the wall and floor sockets. Yeah. To to on fire. So you can have like little flickering fire anywhere. Yeah. Now that's um, cool. Uh, I was, <laughs> I'd sketched out, where is it? I'd sketched out a modular, modular fire <laughs> at some point. I don't know where it is. Uh, oh, this, this would be really cool. This would be complicated. Uh, Ooh, RFID yeah, yeah. key items that you place on a mini that activate stuff when you move the piece close. That's um we that is possible. We have uh uh the the um the mechanics folks. There's a their 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 tech can take uh you can do magnet switches or whatever. So we'd embed a you embed a magnet in the um. It, you know in the piece and then there's triggers that can be triggered if you put a piece with a magnet on the thing whatever it's certainly something we've talked about so like the portal could trigger literally you put the little tiny MacGuffin on the pedestal and it triggers the uh the led thing that'd be really cool it is possible if we can get this light panel working that's version 2.0 mm. um we should roll the giveaway and i'm gonna get a cider yes I'll roll the giveaway while he's doing that. There's so many to go through. If we didn't do the fan build, we'll do the fan build when he gets back. I think he got distracted. All right, gonna roll this in five, four, three, two, one. David Moffat, congratulations, David Moffat. I'll be reaching out to you. I'm pretty sure I, I've already got your email, so. Uh, uh, <laughs> You know, is it, would, you, would you prefer the, the gift card or a starter dungeon? You've already got a good amount of pieces. I'm assuming you're going to want the gift card, yeah? Uh, you can go to just say here, uh, we've already got your email from the uh, anniversary game stuff, so I can just get you set up pretty easily. Um, Who 
won on a smaller scale, like Hex. Who won? Like for Hex Crawl World Maps. Huh. Who won? Who won? David Moffat. Woo! Yeah. Congrats, dude. Uh, well, that the um the trigger the um that uh the LED I mean the magnet trigger stuff is a good that's a cool suggestion. Like that's the kind of thing that's worth ex- working to sci-fi. Yeah. Well, the things that trigger that affect gameplay in a cool way, and also, I we also don't want like, I don't want to over like you want stuff that's easy to execute at the table, right? You don't want to be spending your session trying to figure out how to like make this thing work. You just want to be able to like have these fun story moments. You just boom, this is like, this thing is is you know, it's it's happening and you're enhancing what's going on in a fun way. It's a dream. What were you gonna say? Um, there's a couple cool things that do with, uh, with, with, with sci-fi. Uh, quite a few people mention sci-fi as like the stuff that they want to see us do. I think it'd be really cool if we were able to, uh, do doors that like opened like airlock doors. Yeah. Uh, just like that kind of cool. Just if we could even get it to like open the way where you get like that, that cool sound effect that happens with it. Like not actually putting like a sound chip in, but just something that, I don't know, just something very satisfying about that. Like, yep. Have you seen yeah. those? Have you seen the outtakes of uh, uh, Star Trek outtakes of people walking into the doors and they don't like? Because there's a PA there with a like a rope and it pulls pulls the door and it, it <laughs> triggers the thing, right? So sometimes they like miss the key or whatever. And, like you know, the person goes to the door and the door is open. They just like run into it. There's like it's amazing. Motorized windmills and water wheels. Guess who said that? Topulus. No, I've seen talk of this. Rabbit burner? Here today. Uh, rabbit. Yeah. Motorized city tech would be awesome, yeah. I guess theoretically we could use something similar to what we did for that motorized drawbridge. Yeah. Wouldn't be terribly different. People like the, uh, the drawbridge really is a, uh, at least the conventions, is a heck of a well, when, when your players stopper. don't know that that's what it does, you know? Yeah, it's a fun, uh, um, there are a couple other good things in here. A lot of people said they really want to see a big modular ship system. Uh, yeah. Oh, yep. Talking this is here, and he says, and he says, no, no, it isn't him. He's all about boats. Yeah. Someone um, mentioned modular ships, and he got summoned. He was like, wait, wait, ha, who? Yeah, that's what did it. Seeing a wind or water mill spinning on your tabletop would be incredible. Yeah. That would that'd be, be that'd be great for for war game stuff too, honestly, because like war games are usually like big sprawling landscapes, and so you could just have that as like a like a key building even, and just to have like the windmill or the, the yeah like a windmill actually going would be great. If you're doing a Quixotean uh, campaign, you could really make good use. If you go sci-fi, would you go more steampunk sci-fi or something else? Man, that's a whole discussion. <laughs> it's an absolutely staggering can of worms that I've been dodging. Yeah, we're we are planning to have more in depth sci fi conversations soon. Um, it's something that the 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 team we're not even sure what we want to do yet because there's so many different directions to go with sci fi. And again, it's a thing like if we had enough time, we would do them all. But picking like what the first big sci fi thing we're gonna do is. There's like a lot of pros and cons behind a bunch of different directions we could go. There's so oh, it's there's so many different ways you can go because you, like there's this there's the first split which is between doing stuff for sci-fi war games and doing stuff for sci-fi RPGs. Yep. And then there's like the splits between all the different genres in war gaming and RPGs. Well, and there's just fundamentally are you doing indoors or are you doing outdoors? Is it an alien planet? Is it an outer space? Is it spaceships? Is it you know? Is it space stations? Is it star bases? Is it like wh- like yeah? Then is it is it Star Wars versus Star Trek? Is it Warhammery? Is it like retro sci-fi? Is it steampunk? Is it like ah? There's so many things to think about. Hmm. These are good problems to have, though. So. Yeah. Where we will we will get there. It is on the, it's on the radar. The best Star Trek outtakes are when they're on the bridge and under attack since they had the shaking in post. Yeah. It's hilarious because they're all just falling over <laughs> randomly. 
I feel like a low power solar could power a windmill. Ah, that'd be interesting. Solar powered stuff. How small can we make a solar panel? Mm. Don't know. The price is the other question. Yeah. Uh, man, what other things? I, I, doing doing speakers and like sound effects is always something that comes up. Yep, little Bluetooth speaker that you could that's embedded in a rock or whatever that you could. That'd be such a funny thing to bust out of the table if nobody knows it's a thing. Yeah. Like you just you just draw attention to this rock or this tree or something, and then all of a sudden like a voice just comes out of it. Hey, buddy, down here. <sighs> Are you ready? It's, to a, rock? It's, it's a whole thing of like whether or not that actually adds to the gameplay enough, but like it's definitely something we've talked about. So far, all of our effects have been visual. Let's see. We have a solar-powered lantern, which has the solar cell, like, two by two inches. Hmm. Let's see if there's a tree on there. Tiny speakers are horrible. Yeah, that is fair. You're probably not going to get great sound out of it. No, it's going to be horrendous. But it would be fun for just, like, a screaming little something. It's fun. Could probably, yeah, I could probably handle like goblin voices. It'd be fine. Yeah, tinny but... little tiny thing. Just don't ask for anybody who has like a lot of a lot of deep like a deep voice or anything. What about a floor that has embedded moving magnets like the skating pond Christmas decorations, where figures move around in a pattern based on moving magnets within the floor to have minis and MacGuffins moving in a circle on their own? Oh, that's a cool uh, animated swords and. Yeah. What would be the best use? Would that be like best for like a spell effect? Like if you're doing. Yeah. I don't know. That's if like if you're doing like spirit shroud or something. What well, what's that? What's that one? What's the something of daggers? Cloud of daggers. Cloud of daggers. Yeah, it's only a, it's only a five foot thing, but if we can actually just make like little daggers flying all over the place. I don't know if that'd be worth it, but it'd be it'd be really cool. I can see the moving bits for traps and puzzles. I guess the real question is, would you be able to make it modular enough that it wouldn't be the same thing every time you use it? No. Like, would, like, would we be able to make that sort of thing function in a lot of different ways? No, it'd be a gag. Yeah. Uh... Well, that's it. Yeah, what else would people want for their games? Like, what would be... I've heard the Infinity Mirrors come up a couple times just as a way to do cool portals. Yep. Um, and that's an easy one, because that's no... We don't have to invent anything. I hadn't thought of, like, a powered windmill before, but that'd be a really cool thing to be able to throw into a town. Hmm. Or a water mill. And what's fun about that is that could actually, depending on how it was designed, you could actually make that playable space, too. Oh, little playable things on the uh on Yeah, the you, could have, you could have little platforms that stay upright. You could, like, lock a mini into it or something. That could be a cool thing. Super cool. Solar ideas are cool, but who has the sun in their game room? That's a good point. Uh, you should just leave it out enough. That, yeah. uh, now at that point, we might as well just put a CR2032 in it. Yeah. There's probably, no, probably no real actual reason to go to solar over using like, those little batteries that last for a while. A trap hmm. chest floor like in Dragon's Lair. Dude. That would actually be really cool. If you could activate, like... I'm sort of like if if you had like a like a, a parquet looking floor, is parquet the right word? Mm -hmm. I guess I guess checker makes no sense, but yeah, just like have like that kind of floor and have like panel like tiles on it, it would like light up like oh a trap activated there, and it could be like a like a random effect thing. Or why not have it drop? I mean, we could if we raise it up, we could have it drop open. Ooh yeah, God that could be, that was one of the coolest that was one of the coolest rooms in Dragon's Lair. The animation on that was just stellar. Like, yeah. 
I remember getting to that room so many times and trying to like remember like all right which you know which way the lightning goes and oh, left right huh ah, eh. Yeah, what else would people like to see? What else what else would enhance? What about those floating magnet pieces that people display things on? Floating you know, magnets. they're yeah, they're really they're they're kind of fiddly. Um like not in a good way. Uh it requires a really power like it, it's like a it's an electromagnet uh and then you have to get this thing in the center and it's like when you get it, it's really cool, but it's it's really hard to get it going. And then like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a trail of tears. I think it would, um, I don't know. I think we would, it, we would be stumbling our way through that. It would be. I think I think at the end of the day, like people wouldn't like. I don't know if you could. I don't think it would be reliably. I think it would just end up being really frustrating. Yeah. Any progress on the 3D flying stands you use with the Wyvern? That'd be amazing in my games. Mm. Ye N no, but they exist. Like we <laughs> were, um, we were, you know, we were kicking around doing a like game accessories Kickstarter or something like pulling them out into their own thing. With, we've got some kind of a, a bunch of interesting miscellany that might um, it could be kind of a neat standalone thing. Would people like that? Like a, a, you know, like a Kickstarter of of game accessories. Let's see. How about light up bioluminescent trees and plants like an avatar? Yeah. We have uh, we have a couple in Wildlands. We could certainly do more of that. People are saying it depends on what all is included. What would they be most interested in? Yeah, what if we if we did make accessories and like little tools and stuff? What would you like to see most? It's a good idea. Some people said yes. Um, well, here's what we do. Like, what about spell spell area effect things like do people use the ones from whiz kids do people want other ones do uh there's some flying bases that work better with some of the terrain dwarven forge offers flat bases don't work super well with jagged floors that was uh part of the reason uh, behind the uh yeah pizza design right yep we have a rocky mountain stand like one of the legs is a uh Whoa. Illuminated fire pieces are always useful and happen in most genres. Look at that. Spell effects are hard to do with heavy builds like rooms, etc. True. Um, I'm cluttering up the canyon scenery now. Look at all these trees. Use the ones from WizKids and could certainly do with more. It's supposed to be sort of cool, but I don't know how much use I would get. With kids LED circle ruins, do light up AOS spell effects would be awesome. Oh, that would be cool. You so don't need it, and it would be so awesome. <laughs> yeah, because there's a there's a fair. I know like people have done like people have done like Bigby's hand. People have done. I, we've got so we've got like the wall spells covered. We've got wall of fire. We've got wall of force. We've got wall of thorns. We got wall of fire. Um, did you say wall of ice? I thought I did. I might have said wall of fire twice instead. I might have. We got a lot yeah. of wall of fire, is what you're saying. Yeah, we got. They're all fired up. You know. Yeah, I, th I feel like we got the walls covered. We don't have a big beast hand. No. We could probably we, make a really cool big beast hand. We don't, I don't know what we do to like set it apart because there are some big beast hand sculpts out there already. It would be modular, so it's a palm, and you have different types of fingers you put on to do. It. Reaper <laughs> Reaper has one that uh, Reaper, Reaper has like a regular big beast hand, and they have one that's flipping people off. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, UV light pen stuff would be neat. Yes. Ooh, does anybody make I'd love to double down on some of the stuff we did with Dread Hollow. Or Dread Hollow. Uh, Under Doom. Has anyone made a mage hand? A mage hand? Uh, just a little... Have you played a mage hand? Seems I like there's a... gotta be at least some mage hand option, right? I, although I guess the thing is that it's small. Yeah, I know, so but you could just put a little, like a little, you know, a little hand on a little base and 
Just uh, just put our skeletal hands sideways. There you and, go. Uh, using a UV light pen to write in random parts of the journal my PCs found. WizKids has a mage hand mini, apparently. Yeah. Ooh, a gelatinous cube. They have a cool gelatinous cube. You can put a mini inside it. A gelatinous cube that actually fits down your corridors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. You don't have wall of sand yet. That's a good point. Guess we got a new desert just so we can have a wall of sand. Confirmed. Functioning catapults and trebuchets. Is that rabbit? Do we, we want to be liable for all the damage that comes out of it? We have a functional catapult and trebuchet. That's also fair. Wasn't that rabbit or no? It was actually a serious. No, that was that was someone else. No. Oh. Yeah, that's Twitch James Austin. The Whiskey Jello Keep is cute. I got one from the brother a few years back. Uh, let's see, working lighthouses. Whoa. That could be cool, actually. Let's see. Is this thing really Arabian cool? Nights and Glowing Jin. Ooh. That is cool. Doing yeah, doing like some LED Jin would be really cool. I just want us to make a pseudo dragon. It's like my favorite monster. It never gets love. So it's not really a dragon. It's a suit out. No, they're adorable. That was always. So it's a dragon in a suit. Like, what's what's wrong with that? Going sci-fi modular mechs. Oh. That would be cool. You could use that for a lot of different things, actually, and that that might actually maybe that's actually worth looking at like it could be a thing like because just doing gunpla is like an assembling and, and and painting thing in general is like a big hobby maybe that would actually be worth looking at huh yeah we can do that with lancer we could potentially make them compatible with battletech as well uh what should i do in this build to uh to spice so I got this this like Fay Pond thing here. Wow, it really blows out this camera. Light projector spell effects. That would be cool. With a put the Moam on the uh the bottom of Pride Rock there. Got some cliffs over there, open area ruined castle over here with our and the glowing inner bits. The build needs an overhang over the Fay Pond. Mm. All right, wait. So we'll do this. So Jack can uh, dive off of it. What are the What are the build dimensions? Asks uh, Balls McJuggler. Uh, oh, he actually asked earlier. Um, so they're they're actually fairly new. Uh, they they were asking for people who are fairly new. What's our general production cycle like? They're like, it looks like you have a yearly Kickstarter in the fall, generally speaking. We have a yearly uh, Kickstarter whenever we can <laughs> get ready for it. Uh, and it takes us about a year to kick stuff up. All right, how is this for a... Uh, it's two foot by three foot to answer the... Uh, uh, now that's a cool overhang, right? You could... You can get into all sorts of shenanigans up there. Hmm, we'll put this guy in here. Do a little magic crystal. Oh, where are my crystals? Crystal, 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 crystal. Want Dwarven Forge Lincoln logs? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a diving point, says Jade. Bone pile in the Fay pool. Wait, where? This is like really shaping up into a pretty cool build. Turns out. It's all over, it's all coming together. Ah. It took time to lay out all those foam blocks, but uh Yeah. It's a lot of pre building. All the pre 
Free building is the key to every good building. We gotta remember to do the fan build before we wrap up tonight. But I'll wait until you're not on a roll, because it seems like you're really into it right now. I want Im ooh, I want embedded screen pieces a la the light panel so you can feed images and video to it. Mm. So maybe like a phone app or something, you just send like a photo and like we've talked you can about like different photos we've talked and videos about, on it. Yeah, we're talking about doing a thing that you could put your phone in. The challenge is people have very different phones that have different um uh you know different footprints. Yeah, I think the I think the play would be to have it be a panel that you use an app or something to change the display on. Well, that was the original, yeah, the original light panel I wanted to be. Uh, uh oh, I'm getting echo. It was the, uh, it was going to be the light puck started as a as a, a deluxe light panel. Mini Game Boys in every tile. Uh, and it turned out it was impossible to do a matrix that size that was also affordable. Look, all Odin Forge is asking for is uh, no, no. to eventually, two to eight years from now, be able to build Rivendell. Fair, fair. That's not asking too much. We got closer after Wildlands, but we still need the ability to make the buildings more or less. That'd be cool for living paintings, the uh, frame thing. You can get the digital photo frame that's just too big and bulky or way too expensive. Or both. I guess it's fair, yeah. Like something something that has a technology that's lightweight and fits in a build well. Oh, crystals in the uh, floor here. Imagine your Fae portal just being a gif of Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Da, da, da. Ah, that's cool. I'm gonna move this tree. Crystals are working well. Had to, had to deforest here to get to this. So I see a small seven inch tablet in the next Kickstarter. I don't know that we're doing it, but there's a lot of interesting ideas. Uh... <laughs> Why build Rivendell when you could build the boats the elves left on? Hmm. <laughs> Topulous. Let's see. What other... What other tech do we have outside of the light panel and the light puck? We got the fogger, which we talked about a lot on stream, just because that's been going through like all its development on stream, basically. We have modular LEDs. That was. I don't know yeah. anybody else that's doing that. Is there too many crystals? Is there such a thing? When are we getting the modular siege tower with motorized wheels and ramp? <laughs> Somebody's going to find a way to make a siege tower using the dock system. Well, let me ask you this. How many times have you needed a siege tower in your game? If they had one, they would use it. No, oh, stop. They would... <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I love, I love me a good siege tower. I... I, I yeah. I, I just... Would you use it? Let's see. Uh, in all honesty, there are lots of ideas for new things to do, but one of the things I like most is continued support for existing systems. Yes. To continue to make my existing pieces feel like they are worth more as I purchase more. Who said that? Give them a prize. Uh, Jade Kind. Jade Kind. So we have. So that's one of our. So funny enough, our our vow as we're struggling to uh, get this this uh, light panel and fogger done in time for Wildlands is no new no new technology in the city kickstarter instead we're just going to focus on support for the existing technology um so the, the goal is to have support for the light panel for the 
the light puck and for the fogger. Um, and we definitely have fogger. We have we're gonna have some roof options, fogger roof options for smoking chimneys. That one's like that one's a given. Um, we don't know exactly what we're doing for light panel yet, and we have a couple of cool light puck things. So who's got a good? What, what should we do? What light panel? What do we do with an eight by eight light panel in a city? But yeah, I totally you support really that. Think of like, it's having like magic runes on the floor, but eight like, by eight of a huge. mage's college or something. Yeah. The um and the the challenge is uh further. So we're also when you want to have LED support for the LED, the modular LEDs. Is this is this stupid to put a uh, to put this in the center of the? Is it just like a a crystal? Uh, that not, is that good or is that bad? Have I gone too far? I like it. I imagine it looks better to the eye than it does on the on the camera. Yeah, the the uh, the camera. But the problem is right now everything is remote gaming, so all that matters is the camera. I mean, that's a crazy. Uh, what if I was saying the temple magic pool, glowing holy temple floor, arcane portal in the mage school. Uh. You need a fogger piece that pushes up the fog in a line. That way you can cast laser and light images onto it. Yeah. Translucent runes on the floor of fancy stone would be sick. Uh, I'm going to try some. If cities are getting elevated, would elevated combat pieces be worth adding, like for big dragon fights and stuff? Maybe we should try to get the flight stands out. Maybe? That's a good point. If we're if we're trying to if we're trying if the if the point of if one of the goals of this is to try and make the cities have more elevation to them. Yeah, we need to support maybe, that. Yeah. Uh Arcane Portal would make more sense for the light puck, I think. Well, That's a fair both. point. Make the light panel put lights in windows of buildings in the city. So you'd stand it on its side and uh that's there's no way we could get inside a uh, probably it's four stories tall, and you'd have to knock out all the floors inside. That's fair, yeah. But you I use like the, the light up clusters of buildings. Right, you build them on it with no floor, or something. Ah, uh, it's 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 kind of modern, but it would be. <laughs> it's kind of cool to have like floor pieces with like spotlights, basically, and the light panel like shines up through like these like translucent circles on the edges. So I'm 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 going nuts here. I'm just I'm paving the whole thing with crystals to see what it looks like. <laughs> you might need to lower the the f stop on the DSLR to get it to read. Or turn down the. What am I at? Oh man, I'm almost at the dimmest. Look at that. Uh, does the light panel work with like burning building stuff? Do some kind of fiery city effect. It's constant though, but yeah, maybe there's a water pool, uh, glowing whirlpool next to the dock. The challenge with the glowing whirlpool is then you have to elevate all of your water up one floor height. Um, mm. I like these ideas. Though. Some... Oh, there's saying use use the light panels the base of the floor and surround it with walls and then turn the light panel up and it'll you'll see the light kind of shining out through the through the windows it'd be cool for like a stained glass window in, in particular if we get it to work right yeah problem is it's the exact same it's the exact exact footprint of the floors so like you need to have we're not, the floors the it walls need to be an on it would need to be like a seven by seven that would fit inside a frame of regular size. Fiber optics to a frosted window. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Create pyramid pieces like periscopes to cast light up and outwards inside the city buildings. Hmm. Make the Fey version of Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> 
You're, t- you're telling me uh, in a city of magic users, why wouldn't there be magic billboards? Totally would be. You use it for a floor that looks like a fissure is opening to break open a building for more city ruins. Ooh, I did a cool fissure floor thing back in the original KS3, the original city Kickstarter. Let's look at this thing on the other. Let's see what this camera looks like. Can this even... Smoldering ruins, like an 8x8 eight eight section. How about some larger platforms slash small tables, like we do with terrain trays and stands, but many tables we could place cities slash surface builds on top of, with maybe a foot of clearance underneath, for a whole separate build. Sewers, dungeons, etc. Oh, that's a clever idea. Permanent teleportation circle. It would be kind of cool to have a floor that like looks normal until you try and light through and you realize that some of it was translucent and suddenly there's like a magic circle glowing on the floor. Man, these these cameras cannot handle the uh, the intensity of this light panel. It's a really neat effect. It's one of those things that just works better to the eye than a camera sensor. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It gives it. It's definitely more than just the magic pool I'd bargained for. Sounds like people are saying they preferred it when uh, the crystals were crusty in the corners and there was still some pool visible. Like a fogging sewer piece. That'd be kind of cool. Have like fog coming up through a sewer grate. Hollowed out maybe mini mirrors to reflect the light through the wall. Wall with a light pedal under it glowing through. I'm not sure if new sewer pieces are being added, but light panels would be cool to light up sewer sludge if cast in translucent Dwarven Forge. That would be cool. Glowing Ninja Turtle sludge. Yeah. That'd be a cool way to like add some punch to the sewers. A revisit, a revisit to sewers would be amazing with the fogger and light panels. That is true. We didn't have that tech when we uh, did sewers uh, initially. We are, uh, we're not going back to sewers, though, right now. Not in this. It'll happen. Right, but if we do... In the future. When we do. Be some cool stuff to add. Is that by a sunny game? The main thing I can think of for the light panels would be having interiors with things like candles or candle stands on the floor, or other things where LEDs are not viable in the pieces themselves, maybe to illuminate the inside of a foundry with molten metals. Oh, foundry. Actually, yeah, a, a, a forge wouldn't be a bad... A big... They all forge. Yeah, if, like, everything in there is, like, hot metal, you can do that. Yeah, that's not much. Glow-in-the-dark chugs. <laughs> Sci-fi sewer foggers with lasers. That just sounds like just adding everything. I think that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> Light panel under the wall with fiber optics through the walls leading oh. to the window so you can still have the inside of the buildings open. Huh. You'd have to have a hole in the floor to fit the fiber optic through? Or do you, you'd have the fiber optic built into the floors? I think. So normally it'd be fine, but if there is a light source under it, it would take the... Uh, yeah, it would take the light. It would take the light through. Run with it. Huh. LED ghosts. Oh, my back's killing me. I'm getting old. How old do my... No, stop. <laughs> How old do my kids need to be to watch Ghostbusters? How old do I have to be? Uh, I mean, so there's like... I mean, the, the blowjob thing is like not going to read to a kid, right? I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't when, haven't seen it with, since I was since it came out. With Dan Aykroyd, there's like that scene with a ghost like unzipping his pants and then. Yeah, I don't remember. His his, his like eyes roll back. Like I don't think that's gonna read to a kid. I don't think they'll. Yeah, well, it didn't read to happening. me. So. That's not in all the cuts. Interesting. I didn't know that wasn't in all the cuts. Hmm. There, yeah, there's some dirty jokes, but I think most of them are. It doesn't really show anything that explicit. I think it's mostly innuendo that they probably won't. 
they probably won't realize something is 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 dirty when it is. Yeah. They're 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 very much going to like things like tell them about the Twinkie more, you know. I guess there is some language, but I don't know how you feel. Every parent has like different approach to like language, so. Yeah, I'm. Uh, we'll get there when we get there. It's uh. They still haven't. Their uh, their bad word vocabulary is is really negligible right now. Okay. Maybe it's because they don't watch any movies and there's been a pandemic for a year, and and we're That's really good fair. about we're really good about not swearing at home. You know what doesn't have any curse words in it? Star Wars. I think there's probably a couple very minor ones in there. Oh, Goofy Movie is what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> goofy Movie. Not a single swear. Fair. Uh, Fair. Six-year-old right. likes it. My kids have been watching it for years since they were five or six. Dude, my kids are five and love go Everybody seems to be showing Ghostbusters to their kids exactly at five years old for some reason. <laughs> and then they're all terrified of ghosts. Yeah. The ghost is... Uh, what else does this build need? What do we got? What um, is, according to uh, Archmages, it still needs some cured castle walls. Cured? Wait, is that Archie Mag Archie Magus? The uh, is that Arch Doug? Magus. Is it Doug? You know them? Uh, Archie Magus DJB. So I'm assuming the yeah, D is Sanford. Doug Doug is What's up, Doug? Here, you know what I got? Wait, what do I have from Doug here? I got. Yeah, this is like a. Uh... This is a Doug classic, Red Beard's Tavern. Alternatively, older than six, Gary the Gygax. niece and nephew were allowed to see it by their parents and have been freaked out for months. Wait, so what did what did Doug say we should put on the uh, uh, cured castle walls? What's a cured castle wall? Or maybe curved castle walls? Like go higher with the tower? I'm not sure. Let me see if he clarifies. Curved castle walls. Yes, it is him. Oh, he wants them in life. I yeah yeah no I okay we're get, we're gonna go to the oh. castle at some point yeah. yeah that's true everybody's everybody's bringing up the uh, the the dickless jokes in uh, Ghostbusters they do they do make they do make uh, a, yeah. a, a scene out of that so your kids would probably want to quote it okay fair yeah so I don't know if you, if you don't oh, want oh yeah. If you don't want Hopkins running around saying this man, no, no, good. no, we're out, we're out. <laughs> we're out. <laughs> nah. There's that, yeah. Uh, curved castle walls. Aside from curved castle walls, which you don't have, what do we, uh, what do we need to put in here? Oh, let's put some mushrooms in. Where do I put those mushrooms? I put my mushrooms. There's a lot of people who just quote those. The thing is, you don't really get to control which lines your kids decide to, to, to quote. No, no, you do not. And uh, more often than not, they tend to choose the ones you'd rather they didn't. You, uh, I remember, I used to be a kid once. Yeah, I was like, you speak like you're uh, you're versed in this parenthood thing. I also was the oldest of six, so I just always had a kid in the house. Fair. Ghostbusters also have the most smoking I've ever seen in a movie. That is a good point. Uh, the five-year-old really likes the real Ghostbusters cartoon and really wants to see the movie. Man! I forgot about the real Ghostbusters. What's it's a weird show. I don't know. Man, I am... I don't know any of these things. So, so the real okay. Ghostbusters was like... It was like a copyright dispute or something. It's not... So they called it... There were two. There were two shows. One was like Ghostbusters as you know it, and then one was I think the real Ghostbusters is like a completely different thing. I'm trying to remember. There, there was one. There, there were like two Ghostbusters shows, and uh, one of them was just like completely different concept uh, when what? it came to the cast. Oh, but it's not. But it's it's still busting ghosts. It's still busting ghosts, I believe. Ghostbusters cartoon was the bad one, and the real one is the one based off the movies. Right, okay. That's, that's what it was. Ghoster... Yeah, real Ghostbusters. They had to call it real Ghostbusters because there was another Ghostbusters show. 
That was not actually that how? bland. It was how? very bad. How is that even a thing? How do you? I have... don't know. I don't know if they like forgot to get the copyright or something, or if they I, forgot I to get the copyright. Yeah. They, so they had to call the they had to call their cartoon the real Ghostbusters. Oh, that's to amazing. Try and pull it back. You're thinking of the one with the gorilla from Filmation? Yes. Yeah. the The other Ghostbuster cartoon had a monkey in it. That's uh, how you know it's quality. Do you have wildlife, birds, and squirrels you could add? Maybe a porcupine? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever end up buying that, uh, getting that porcupine off of Etsy? No, but... No, I... I, I uh, it was gone when I left, but I have this... <laughs> it's about scale. No, I'm the best thing to do is to not make a big deal out of it. Yeah, if you if you make a big deal out of any of the oh yeah, no, they just want to. That's when they're gonna remember it. Yep. Yeah. The Ghostbusters bad one had like one or two guys and a gorilla in a crappy car. Yes. Trademark, not copyright. Uh. A modular porcupine with firing quills. Oh, dude. But Pokemon's can't actually fire their quills. But, you know. No, but uh, all the cartoons made me think they could. Who casted large on the poor porcupine? <laughs> he just no, he drank from that uh, that pool. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> made out of cat whiskers. It's gonna happen. I got it here. I have a, a bastion of cat whiskers. Rabbit wants to know if we're going to do a were moose. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Not before we do a mega deer, I think. How many were meese have you. Anyway. The plural of moose is meese, yes. Yeah. My kids enjoyed the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, that's all they cared about. That's fair, that is a very good visual gag. Wow, this camera is... I still have my favorite line is to tell him about the Twinkie. Just like the sheer... The sheer seriousness that that's delivered with. A Porky Bear. Porky Bear. What do you need, Curve Castle Walls? You could take the time and heavily edit Ghostbusters to be more appropriate. Uh... Do not have this time. See. I just keep thinking about having like a a really cool looking windmill that actually spins on the table now. I feel like a water wheel would be cooler except it, it goes into the water. Like you'd need to you'd need to cut like It'd have to be negative space, right? Yeah, I don't know how you would ever actually, like, you'd have to have a hole in the water to, like, because the water wheel needs to be in the water. So, uh, so theoretically, what we could do is we could, uh, we could have, like, a water sculpt around, like, the outside of the bottom of the wheel part, and so the wheel is spinning and going down into, like, the water. It creates churning, uh... Yeah, and so we could have, like, some disturbed water there. And that could either be built in line with water tiles or just be built to like slope back down into a terrain tray. Disturbed water sounds like a band. Well, it's because of disturbed, I think. The, the disturbed water sounds like a shoegaze band or something instead. Yeah. Hmm. Like they don't sound like a they don't sound like a metal band. I think it would be plural. Disturbed waters. Disturbed waters. Yeah. yeah. They were saying, like, well, sounds like we're doing Sculpted Rivers, then. Confirmed. I will buy any mill developed. My people are just quoting Ghostbusters in chat, and that's very good. <laughs> that's a lot of good lines. Ghostbusters, yeah. Blues Brothers, Wayne's World. It's a good, uh, it was a good time. Uh, th that was like a... There was like a 15 year gap there between those. I just feel like okay. they're all connected because Dan Aykroyd is in both Ghostbusters and Blues Brothers 
And then Blues Brothers was an SNL movie, and Wayne's World was also an SNL movie. So I just consider that all to be it's all, I, <laughs> all the same thing. That's fair. Um, you know. Is there anything else to talk about with technology? Uh, Ooh, if it be so. I, we didn't really talk terribly much I about the know. LEDs. I feel like the LEDs are one of the easier things to understand. That was. Is that crazy? Huh. Do cloud terrain, we need castles in the sky. Disturbed Waters is my Christian rock band. <laughs> That that fits, yeah. Add the fodder piece with it, and it could disguise the whole of the wheel. Hmm. I don't know how we get the fog to go out there, but yeah, that would be cool. All right, let's put this. Life of Brian has the most quotable lines. Did you miss the giveaway? Yeah, the giveaway was about an hour ago. Speaking of which, it is nine o'clock. We should do the fan build before we end. Uh, right. Done. Just because we got it. Um. Today's fan build is actually pulled from the uh, monthly build challenge that everybody does over in the Discord. Uh, this month's theme was uh, Strange Locales. Uh, this one was submitted by Orloff. Let me pull up what they said about the build real quick. Look at the... Uh, um, the... Oh, I'll bring the mic. The... Uh, yeah. uh, Lemur Pools turned sideways... And that passage going under the hellscape is amazing. Yeah. Right, we Can I zoom in? So what they say is, completely ordinary caves here, except for the crawl passage into an unexpected lava outpouring. looking for demon victim, Bivrak. However, the demon made a plane shift error into the living rock. Now his foul essence is leaking into the very stone and water. Can the players drive the pair away before they ruin the town's water supply? Wow, and look at the uh, the portcullis as a uh, as a bridge. Great plan. There is still time to submit for this build challenge too. There's still a week left on this one. So for the people who are saying like, "Oh, I keep forgetting about it," or "I didn't know this was happening," uh, if you join the Discord, uh, they do uh, they pick a different theme every month, and uh, this one's still going for a bit. But uh, yeah, I thought this was clever, just the idea of like, because really cool. it also like. It also opens up the potential that, like, maybe the hellscape starts expanding over time throughout the uh, build as well. Um, I like the duality of it. And, you know, the, the best thing would be to actually hide the hellscape part of it until they actually go through that cave. And then you bust it out. It's like, yeah, you go through this tunnel and suddenly you're in lava. Um, it's awesome. Good, creative, fun build. Oh, look at that. Putting the bank sideways along the uh, uh, along the wall was clever. The the oh, lava bank. I was using the back of the uh, the back of the lava fall in there for the um, the skeleton. It's like the dragon skeleton on the back of that. Oh, Dude, so make clever. it use of that hidden detail, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Such great creativity. I love it. Yeah. Dungeon ruin dungeon floor in there for uneven uh boots. <laughs> Finley says he's now thinking about modular shuttles, mechs, engine, computer components <laughs> for sci fi with plug in elements for different functions. I love it. <laughs> Be amazing. You plug in the LED unit thing if we if we go ham enough with it they could just be fun toys even if you don't play sci-fi stuff is uh, that what happens when you're on ham planet if, you, if we just go ham planet on these mechs that, that that's the name of the sci-fi kickstarter <laughs> adventure if it, ham planet <laughs> journey to the ham planet <laughs> you know it's so uh... oh man what did i do what did i do I, i'm not sure I don't know what you've done. Uh, are you doing like a walkthrough of the... Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna hit this okay. camera. If you don't have a pig mech, I'll be mad. Unfortunately, I don't know how much of a market there is for pig mechs. Pig mechs I guess if we get that Mother 3 partnership, we can uh, we can work something out. 
Mother 3? Hot, hot, hot Property Mother 3, a Game Boy Advance game that only came out in Japan. Uh, <laughs> I'll take one pig mech. We're going to need all of you to take like 20 if we're going to be able to make a pig mech. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to afford production costs otherwise because we're not going to sell it anywhere. I'm still waiting on my Mother 3 port. If Nintendo ever actually announces it, they're going to make so much money just off of, like, finally giving in, you know? Journey to the center of Ham Planet. Oh, wait, I don't know why this is here. Well, let's see. Journey to the center of Ham Planet. This build came out looking pretty good. I don't know if this is kind of crazy. There's some, I don't know, there's some some bonkers. I like, didn't put in much love on the left. Oh, I didn't finish putting trees over there either. <laughs> NPC Charles is saying we should, we should, we won't know if there's demand until we make the pig mech the stretch goal for six million next next Kickstarter. <laughs> That's the. <laughs> oh, I should put a waterfall. That back uh, section could be a waterfall. That would be sick, actually. Hmm. I wish you could make like a sludge waterfall to go with the. Uh... Do you have to eat your way to the center of Ham Planet? I hope it's cured, right? Love that crystal build. Yeah, it's a lot of cool, like, huh. just showing, like, fun stuff you can do with the light panels and the filters. I wish it looked as good me. on camera as it looks in person. But just when it comes to lighting effects, it just works way better with your actual human eyes. Yeah, and it's just kind of the nature stop of... Stop uh, down, though. It looks okay. when If we blast it out, you can't see anything. But if I go way down, yeah. low, it's... you get the... If you had enough spare change to buy that build of the month... I have a feeling you're not going to be the only one. It's a uh, yeah. Well, it's a big we'll experiment. next month will be we'll do a cheaper one. <laughs> hey guys, buy this castle build of the month. Also buy twenty pig mechs. <laughs> pig mech of the month. We could. Go I'm gonna call it the ham hawk. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. Uh... I gotta show you. I gotta it's show you the, the designs of all the, the all the pig related armor and machines and everything in mother three because i think you get a kick out of it they got they got very creative with the uh, character design honey glazed hand planet honey glazed hand it's smoked really the next build of the month won't be 2.5k i'm pretty sure we won't do a build of the month this expensive again for a while or maybe ever we'll see yeah this uh, was just the reality of like trying to make a castle build of the month Because all the small, everything that you would do as a small build of the month for castles basically already exists as a set. That's great. I gotta run something on here. It's a cool, it's a cool looking build. I'm happy with the way it came out. And all this happened because somebody suggested putting the water, uh, the water current overlay on top of the sludge. That was me. Or no, not even that they suggested that it. Casper Toby just did it in his build. Well, he he had the he had a um, he had the the sludge as his water, and so I was like, yeah. oh, we're gonna do the water, and then I'm like, well, the way to make it look like water is we'll put the uh, put the current overlays, and next thing you know, here we go. Someone said they wanted to use the. Well, I guess we were looking at the overlays last week. So, so they we had yeah, to incorporate the overlays, overlays last week. Yeah, so we had to incorporate them. And, yeah, it started out with saying, like, oh, let's do a build with all three of these overlays. Why not? And then Ooh. early on in that process, then we looked at the Kung Fu Panda build. Uh, and we were like, oh, that's a cool way to do water. And uh, here it is. Here's hoping for an Underdoom build of the month. Maybe when we get the new Underdoom sets in store. Yeah. We did one we could do Psionic, that. Psionic Maelstrom. That's true. The Psionic Maelstrom had some... Uh, was that... Were we were we selling them back then? Had we started selling oh, them yet? No, maybe not. I think I think that was that was the first one in during pandemic. So you're right. No, we hadn't started it. That's true. Yeah, that was filmed remotely. Wow. Yeah. So we'll have to do one with when those when the core sets come in, we'll do some under doom something. But that's every six months from now. Yeah. What should we do next month for build of the month? What would people like to see that we haven't done in a yeah, while? What we not hit on we so we. We did. We just did sewers. We did ice. We did a forest build pretty recently. We did caverns. We did hellscape. We, we haven't done burrows. Dungeon. Uh, uh. Didn't we? 
Was that at Build of the Month? We've never sold one, at least. I don't know what all put together. I know we did City. I don't know. But what would like? But what would people like to see? Cities, catacombs, <laughs> docks, and rowboats. Huh? Maybe. Do we have the stock to do like some kind of? Uh, the when the docks arrive in like four months. That's fair. It's true. The docks are out right now. Yeah. Diagonal vaulted corners, guys. It has to be things that we have in stock, not things that you want us to restock. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Plankstone. Hmm. We did the dungeon, the sinister dungeon layer piece, and I used the alchemy supplies last month. I've been picking stuff out of. Maybe I'll use those cages. Do a build of the month with the basic dungeon and some scene pieces. Make like a cool dungeon build. Did, we just did. Didn't we just do a dungeon build three months ago? When was it? the the foul spirits was December? You know we do? Well, hmm. I think it was December. It was. It was literally. It was like a classic remastered. Uh, some. What was the? Oh, it was. It was a sinister dungeon layer plus like a classic remastered. I think, if I'm gonna guess. It could be fun to. Hmm. You can never do too many dungeons, though. It's true. It's there. It'd be cool to do one that's like puzzle focused because I know, like, earlier on in Build of the Month, and the thing is, like, I would love for us to just be able to grab them and say, like, oh, let's let's sell this one now. But they weren't made with like actual set compositions at that point, really. Um, no, they were set compositions. That I just don't know if we have them in stock. That's fair. Well, I remember that first one. The first one I edited was the Urge to Dirge. Uh, we had that music puzzle. The Urge to Dirge. Yeah, Urge to Dirge yeah. was... Was that the first one? Was that the very first one? Yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. That was the first thing I ever did for Dwarven Forge was editing wow. that. Um, yeah, that was a fun one. That was like a yeah, Passages, maybe, a Double Doors, and a Starter Dungeon or something? I don't know. It was pretty simple. Puzzles and Traps. Maybe Traps were Caverns, fun. Passages, Maze. Mm. Rowboats, Thor, and Water Terrain Trays. We did a nice... We did an Thor. Water, the Cobalt uh, Cobalt Cove was Aaron Thorne and Water. Train Trays was a good do one. A, ooh, here's an idea. Do a starter player build of the month. One that could get someone some caves and dungeons for under 200. Mm, a little a dungeon and cave connected or something. Like, yeah, so, yeah, so probably aim for like maybe around the Zoltar's game room like level, but doing a uh, a different kind of smattering of pieces. Hmm. So something that could be like a, a good on ramp for people. Yeah, no, I love that. The the polar opposite of this giant castle. <laughs> be great. Three D dungeon using terrain trays vertically. That's where that's from. Uh, that's from Lady Sabel. So. Hey. Gotta consider that. I vote for ice right. and sewers build of the month. And we just did ice and sewers though. We could do a full sewers at some point, except we don't have some stock. I don't know. We gotta get it. it's nine fifteen. Let's get out of here. That's fair. Uh, for that you need a dungeon to cavern transition piece. Uh, man, there's a lot of things we could do. Yeah. Oh, Chuck's watching too. Hi, Chuck. Hello, guess... sir. Also, bye, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> we're wrapping up. Okay. But <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Is that a chill? What are we doing next week? Do we know what we're doing next week? Uh, next week we've got. Oh, we're uh, doing. Cities. Well, yeah, so Wednesday is going to be another cities update. Yeah. So that's going to be more of the upcoming Kickstarter uh, and the kind of how things have developed since the last time we talked about it. Yep. Uh, and we've got Thursday's Hobby Hang again. And next Tuesday, we, uh, my my other my other role play group, uh, Natural Ones, is doing an all women's game uh, to raise uh, to raise money for uh, for the I'm Ready movement. Um, so that's Tuesday. We that's got Tuesday night. Gary Con tomorrow night. You're on it. Gary, Gary Con tomorrow night. That's true. After Hobby Hang, <laughs> and then and now we're after the Hobby Hang ends. So I'm just gonna be running from uh, Hobby Hang to that. Woo! So we got a lot of content yeah. coming up. Oh, and uh, Stefan's running a game on Sunday, Sunday. with uh, his kind of usual crew: Peter Atkinson, David Baxter, Luke Gygax, Lisa Teague. Um, I don't remember who else is that? Should be fun he said it's gonna be what did he say rambunctious or something 
I don't know. We he you know right. we might even get him on Vorpal. He's 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 Vorpal curious. We'll see. It could be the. Uh... We'll we'll see what happens. We can watch Chris make his costume on Hobby Hang. I genuinely might have to. Depending, yeah, on, I need to go get the rest of the pieces for it tomorrow morning. So yeah, I have to make a, I have to make a costume for this. I'm playing a Loxodon, so like. I have to like. I'm not gonna make a convincing elephant, but I'm gonna make a funny elephant if nothing else. Um. If I was <laughs> gonna get that figured out tomorrow. If I was to describe you as an elephant, it would probably be a funny elephant. Yeah. Thank you. I... Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, let's get... thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll uh, tomorrow night, happy hang. We'll be back next week. Uh, have a good one. Be safe. Thanks. <laughs>